Hello everyone. It's me Sanjay Vasu back again for yet another video. Today we are going to see a Cambridge lower secondary checkpoint paper for mathematics paper 1 April 2021. Let's start. Complete the calculations. A 0.9 multiplied by 4 is equal to 3.6 Dash multiplied by seven is two point eight. Zero point four multiplied by seven. Two a. Write an algebraic expression for each function machine. One has been done for you. N plus four is obviously n plus four. N into five is five n, and then you have to subtract three, so five n minus three. B. Complete the function machine for the statement below. Hassan thinks of a number. He divides the number by four and then adds two. The answer is seven. So first he divides this number n by four, and then adds two. So that's the function machine. Work out the number that Hassan was thinking of in part B. So n divided by four plus two is equal to seven. N divided by four equals seven minus two, which is equal to five. N is equal to Five into four, which is equal to twenty. So n equals twenty. Question three. Here's a number fact. One hundred forty-eight into seventy-six is eleven thousand two hundred and forty-eight. Use this fact to work out the calculations. So there are two calculations. Fourteen point eight into seventy-six is just this number fact. Divide by ten, so one one two four eight divided by ten. That's equal to one one two four point eight. That's the answer. Next, one hundred forty nine into seventy six. Notice that one hundred forty eight into seventy six is one one two four eight. One hundred forty nine into seventy six is nothing but one forty eight into seventy six. And then you add seventy six to it. We already know that this is equal to eleven thousand two hundred forty eight. So we just add seventy six to that. That becomes eleven thousand three hundred and twenty four. That's the answer. Question four. Eva measures the diameter of a circle as fifteen point nine centimeters. She uses the calculator to work out the area. She says the area is one ninety eight point five five six five zero nine seven centimeters squared. Round this answer to an appropriate degree of accuracy. What do you mean by a degree of accuracy? It means, for example, let's say two decimal places, three significant figures, and etc. etc. But you know the deal. It's about rounding the value. Here we are going to use. Two decimal places, but you can use three significant figures or anything you want, but it has to be something that we can round. Could even be one decimal place or four significant figures or something, but I'm going to use two decimal places. So that will be equal to one ninety eight point five six centimeters squared. That's the answer. Let's move on to question five. Work out seven point two minus three point four six three. Let's just do this on a subtraction. Three point four six three. Notice that I've expanded this with two extra zeros at the back, but they don't make any difference to the number. So when we subtract this, we can cancel out this. It becomes nine, ten, and then that'll be seven, three. You can borrow one from here, eleven, so seven, and then the point three. So three point seven three seven is the answer. Question six. Here's a number statement. Eleven by twelve minus one by two is equal to a by twelve. Find the value of a. First, let's make one by two into something divided by twelve. One by two, when you multiply both sides by six, it becomes six by twelve. Eleven by twelve minus six by twelve. It is equal to five by twelve, and that is equal to eight by twelve. 
A is equal to 5. That's the answer. Question 7. Work out 15% as a fraction in its simplest form. Percent just simply means divide by 100. So 15 by 100. And that will be equal to 3 by 20 when you divide 5 on both sides. 3 by 20 is the answer. Question 8. Here are the parts of two train tandems. One shows journeys from Manchester to Leeds, and the other shows journeys from Leeds to Manchester. Carlos is traveling from Stanley Bridge to Leeds on the 854 train. Find out how long his journey takes. So Stanley Bridge is here, Leeds is here. 854 train. So it takes to 936 to get to Leeds. So now let's subtract 936, 854. Now 6 minus 4, 2. We can take 1 hour from here, so 9. Remember, 1 hour is not 100 minutes, 1 hour is 60 minutes. That's why I'm adding 6 to the tenths place. So now that will be 4. And then 0 hours. So that's equal to 42 minutes. B. Jamila is traveling from Leeds to Dewsbury. She arrives at the train station in Leeds at 8.50 a.m. Find the time of the next train to Dewsbury. So she arrives at 8.50 a.m., which is after 8.40. 8.40 is the first train from Leeds, and the next train is at 9.13, which is after 8.50, which is when she comes. So she will wait 23 minutes to get to the next train, which will be at 9.13. That's the answer. C. Arlo travels from Huddersfield to Leeds on the 812 train, which is this one. He goes shopping in Leeds and returns to the station one and a half hours after he arrived. He then catches the next train back to Huddersfield. Find the time he gets back to Huddersfield. So first, 812 train. This train, when does it reach Leeds? It reaches at 836. So he ends his journey from Huddersfield to Leeds at 836. And then he comes back to Leeds station after shopping one and a half hours later. So plus one and a half hours, which is one hour 30 minutes. That is at 1006, he'll come back. Now we need to find the next train back to Huddersfield from Leeds. He arrives at 10.06 and the next train is 10.14 as 9.41 has already passed. So the next train is 10.14 and then he reaches back at Huddersfield at 10.34 after he goes on that train. So the answer is 10.34. Let's move on to question 9. Convert 160 kilometers into miles. First, we know that one mile is approximately equal to 1.6 kilometers. Therefore, 160 kilometers is equal to 160 by 1.6, which is equal to a hundred miles. That's the answer. Question 10. The diagram shows two cuboids. The cuboids have equal volume, so find the height h, which is this, of cuboid b. Let's start by finding the volume of cuboid a. That is length into breadth into height, which is cuboid a 6 into 3 into 5 which is equal to 90 centimeters cubed so cuboid b is equal to h the height multiplied by 9 multiplied by 5 that's equal to 45 h centimeter cubed as we know both cuboids have equal volume so 45 h is equal to 90 
H is equal to 90 by 45, which is equal to centimeters. That's the answer. 11. Tick to show if each of these statements is true or false. One has been done for you. 1 meter equals 100 centimeters. True. 1 millimeter equals 0 0.01 centimeters. As we know, 10 millimeters is equal to 1 centimeter. So 1 millimeter is equal to 1 by 10, which is equal to 0 0.1 centimeters. So this is false. 1 kilogram equals 1 by 1,000 grams. As we know, 1 kilogram equals 1,000 grams, and therefore this is also false. 1 ton is 1,000 kg. We know this already and that this is true. Therefore, the answer is true for that one. Question 12. Here is a sketch of a compound shape made from a triangle and a semicircle. Use a ruler and compasses to construct this shape accurately. Leave in your construction lines. Line AC has been drawn for you. This question is a geometry question. The thing that you might notice is that I've erased the line AC. But now I'm going to draw it again and draw the full thing. I will redraw the line AC now. Here we have our ruler. Let's go here. And then take a line of 10 centimeters. So that will make from there to there. That's good enough for 10 centimeters. Let's take care of the triangle first. So let's take out this ruler for now. And then let's get our compass out. Let's see about five centimeters. So we need this to be five centimeters. Is it it is at about five point five. Let's decrease the length to make it five centimeters. That will be there. Yes, now it is five centimeters. And then we just draw an arc of five centimeters. And then once we finish drawing, let's take our ruler now and measure seven centimeters and then make this to be seven centimeters. Make it go down a little, and we've got it. And then we just draw the arc. This is the arc. Now let's take our compass out. Let's have a ruler. We will have these two arcs drawn, and then Get our ruler from the start point. Turn it around so that we can draw at the angle. And this is the one. Fine. Like that. And then let's take our ruler, tilt it the other way. Now we've got it going this side. So now let's take our nice line and draw it to the. Now we've got a triangle of seven centimeters. And we've finished our triangle. Now we need to make our semicircle. And because the diameter is 10 centimeters, the radius will be 10 by 2, which is 5 centimeters. So let's take our compass and our ruler and let's measure 5 centimeters 
of the compass. So let's take it and leave it right at the mark of five. There. And also we take the center point of this line so we can draw it. Center point is right there. It's the one where the arc intersects. Let's take our ruler out. Get our compass to that center point. Right there. And then draw a 180 arc. Like this. Now let's move our compass. And see our finished diagram. So we have completed this construction. Now we just have to label it. Let's take this as five centimeters. This is seven centimeters. And this line is 10 centimeters, which is the diameter. And then we have these three points, A, B, and C for the triangle. So we have completed our construction. We will move on to the 13th question for now. The diagram shows the positions of three vertices of a parallelogram. A. Write down the coordinates of a possible position of the fourth vertex. The parallelogram, let's draw, can be like this. So a line there, and then another straight line there. And then the next is missing. What we need to do now to find the last point is to find a point which has the same distance as from this to this, which is from this point to this point, but it should be starting from this point over here. The distance is 6 units. So we need to find a point which is 6 below this. That will be right here. So this point has the coordinates of x equals 5 and y equals negative 3. So let's write that down. 5 comma negative 3. B. Write down the coordinates of a different possible position of the fourth vertex. Let's erase our previous markings for now. Now let's see if you can draw this in a different way. We can. We can draw it like this. Now we need to find a point which has the same distance from this to this, but it starts from here. This distance, as we know, is always six units, and therefore, we need a point six units above this one. So if we go up, it extends to this point over here. That point, when you draw it, it makes a perfect parallelogram. Look, so this point's coordinates are five comma nine. So that is what we write x equals 5 and y equals 9. Question 14. Write 66 by 72 as a fraction in its simplest form. The only thing we have to do here is to divide both sides by 6 because they both are divisible by 6. That makes 11 by 12. You can't simplify it further, so that's the answer. Question 15. Work out 14 plus negative 5.5. That will be 14 minus 5.5 which is equal to 8.5. Next, negative 6 into negative 1.5. So negative into negative equals positive. 6 into 1.5 equals 9. And the answer is positive 9, which can otherwise be written as 9. Question 16. A shop sells two sizes of washing powder. Pack A contains 900 grams plus 1 fourth extra free. Pack B contains 1 kilogram plus 20% extra free. Tick the pack that contained most powder. You must show your work. First, let's see for pack A. 900 plus 1 by 4 of 900. That's equal to 900 plus 225, which is equal to 1125 grams. 
this one kg here is equal to a thousand grams for pack B. So pack B will have thousand plus twenty percent of a thousand. That's equal to thousand plus two hundred. That's thousand two hundred grams. Thousand two hundred is greater than thousand one hundred and twenty five. Therefore, pack B has higher amount of powder. So we can tick pack B. Let's move on to question 17. Two different rectangles are joined together to make a compound shape. Shape A has a length of x plus 3 and a width of x plus 2. Shape B has a length of x plus 6 and a width of x minus 2. Find an expression for the area of the compound shape in centimeter squared. Give your answer in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. Let's start by first finding the area of each separate rectangle, which is shape A and shape B. Let's start with shape A. That will be equal to x plus 3 into x minus 2. And then after that, x into x is obviously x squared. x into negative 2 is negative 2x. x into 3 is 3x. And 3 into negative 2 is negative 6. So the answer is x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 6 which is equal to x squared plus x minus 6 let's see about shape b that is x plus 6 multiplied by x minus 2 that's equal to x squared minus 2x plus 6x minus 12 x squared plus 4x minus 12 so the answer will be shape a plus shape b which is x squared plus x minus 6 plus x squared plus 4x minus 12. add up like terms that's 2x squared plus 5x minus 18. that's the answer Don't forget to give it in centimeters squared. Question 18. Here is a square-based pyramid. The top vertex is directly above the middle of the base. Write down the number of planes of symmetry in the pyramid. First of all, what's a plane of symmetry? Everybody knows about lines of symmetry. For example, let's just draw a rough triangle here. Let's say that this is an equilateral triangle, which means all three are the same length so this is a line of symmetry and then the other two as well there are three lines of symmetry for an equilateral triangle we know about this how about a 3d shape if it's a 3d shape we're trying to find symmetry for it will be a 2d shape which is the symmetry and that is a plane of symmetry. Let's see. First, we have one which cuts through this triangle, goes through the center of the square, and then cuts through the other triangle on the other side. That's one. Next, we have one which cuts through the same way, but this time through the side triangles. That's two. Next, we have one which goes along these two edges and then cuts to the diagonal of the square. That's three. And then the same thing on the other diagonal of the square. That's the fourth plane. Are there any more? No. And therefore, we have four planes of symmetry. Let's move to 19th question. The table shows the ratio of the amount of teachers to the number of students needed for each class. 
Over here is given the class and then the teachers to students ratio. A. Students are asked to choose from three classes. 14 choose swimming, 22 choose volleyball, and 27 choose football. All the classes happen at the same time. Calculate the number of teachers needed in total. First, let's see how many swimming teachers. We label it as S. That's equal to 14 divided by 3 because there are 14 students and 3 students for one teacher. That's 4 with a remainder of 2. But then we need the teacher for these two remaining students. So that will be 5 teachers. Now for volleyball, which is V, we can have 22 by 10, which is equal to 2 with a remainder of 2. But then we need to hire another teacher for these two students as well, which makes 3 teachers. Now for football, F, we need 27 by 12, which is... 2 with the remainder of 3, which is equal to 3 teachers because we need one more for the remaining 3 students. So 5 plus 3 plus 3 is equal to 11. So 11 teachers. B. A dance class needs a ratio of 1 teacher to every 16 students. There are 5 dance teachers, 72 students choose dance. Calculate how many more students can attend the dance class. So, 5 teachers means 16 multiplied by 5 equals 80 students. 5 dance teachers, so 72 dance students. So, the remaining places are 80 minus 72, which is 8 students. So, 8 students more can attend the class. Question 20. Mia wants to investigate if older students have more money than younger. She surveys students at the school. Identify two pieces of data that Mia must collect from each of the students. Number one. She wants to see if older students have more money than younger students. So she needs the age of the students. That's the first one. Age of the students. And second, she wants to see if older students have more money than younger students. Money. That means she needs to find out the money each student's family has. So these are the two things which are needed for Mia to collect. Question 21. The grid shows a straight line. A. Draw a ring around the equation of the line. There are five options. Take a sample point. Let's say this point over here. X equals 3 and Y equals 1. Another point, 4 is X and 2 is the Y. What's the common difference? 3 is actually 1 plus 2. 4 is 2 plus 2. So that means the X value is 2 more than the y value and that means that the y value equals 2 less than the x value that means that we have the equation to be y equals x minus 2 you can substitute values of x and y and they will be correct b a different equation is 2x plus y equals 4 complete the table of values for it x equals 0, then we can substitute 0 plus y equals 4, so y equals 4. y equals 0, then we can substitute 2x equals 4, x equals 2. C. Draw the line 2x plus y equals 4 on the same grid. Let's see. x equals 0, and then y equals 4. So this point, let's put that. And then 2 comma 0. So x is 2 and y is 0. 3 comma negative 2. This is also that point. 
And now we just join these points up together and extend the line. That's it. Let's move on to question 22. Two shapes are shown on the grid. A. Describe the single transformation that maps shape A onto shape B. Let's start. Seeing the inverted position of the two shapes, look at the diagonals if you want to see proof. You can see the diagonals. This one is like this. This one's sloping the other way. So that means it is a reflection. It's been reflected along a line. So it is a reflection. And then let's see this point and this point. What's the middle of these two points? This one. It is on this line, which is the line of y equals 0. And that is the line along which it's being deflected in. So reflection along line y equals 0. B. Draw the image of shape B after an enlargement scale factor 2. Center negative 10, comma 8. The point negative 10, comma 8 is right over here. If you want to enlarge from that point in scale factor 2, we need to see how far each point of this parallelogram, B, we need to see how far it is from this point and then double the distance because it is scale factor two. Let's start with this point, which is at negative four comma eight, negative 10 comma eight. Let's see how far it is. Eight minus eight is zero and negative four minus negative 10 is six. So it is six units in the X axis away. So we need to make it 12 units, so that is at this point over here 2 comma 8 next we look at this one it is 4 away 1 down so we need to make it 4 into 2 which is 8 all the way here and then 2 down which is 1 into 2 so the side will be there and the point will be there Next, we have this point, which is 3 right, 2 down. Now we need 6 right and 4 down to make it double. So the point will be right there, which is the point 2 comma 0. Now we need to find out for the last point. It is 4 right and 3 down, so we need an 8 right and six down that makes the last point over there now we just need to connect these four points like this okay we've got the parallelogram so that's the answer the enlargement of shape b scale factor 2 center 10 comma 8 question 23 students can choose to take part in the club after school Lily draws a pie chart to show the clubs chosen by girls. Yuri draws a pictogram to show the clubs chosen by boys. Tick to show if each of these statements is true or false or you cannot tell. Ten more boys chose football than music. So football for the boys has three and a half of these figures. And music has two and a half of these figures. So three and a half minus two and a half equals one. So one figure is the answer. And one figure represents 20 boys. So there are 20 more boys in football than music. But over here, it's given 10. That means the statement is false. Next one. The modal club is same for both girls and boys. The modal club means whichever club is the one which has been chosen most out of all the three. Out of the girls, half the girls have chosen football club, so that's the most. And out of the boys, a greater proportion of the boys have chosen football than either music or art. 
So the model club is the same and we can write the answers too. Let's look at the next part. A larger proportion of girls than boys chose art. To answer this, we need to first see what is the proportion of girls that chose art from the total. This is a quarter of a whole, so that is the proportion. For the boys though, we need to see how many total of these figures are there. 2 plus 3.5 plus 2.5, that will be equal to 8. And then out of 8, 2 figures have chosen art. So that means 2 by 8 of the boys have chosen art. And that means 2 by 8 equals 1 by 4. So they are equal. These two are equal. Equal proportion and not a larger proportion for girls. Therefore, the answer is false. The last one, a larger number of boys than girls chose football. Well, first thing we need to find out the number of girls who chose football is the half of the total amount of girls. Well, we can find out the amount of boys because 3.5 and a half into 20 is 70. But then in the girls, we don't know what's the actual starting point or in this case the total number of girls therefore we can write the answer as you cannot tell let's go to question 24 here is a graph of four lines the equations of the lines are y equals x plus 14 y equals x minus 14 x plus 2y equals 36 x plus 2y equals 60. use the graph to find an approximate solution to the simultaneous equations y equals x plus 14 and x plus 2y equals 36. First thing we need to do is to find which lines are these out of the four lines in the graph. First for y equals x plus 14. Let's look at this line. Let's choose a sample point from this graph. I will take this point, the point labeled is actually 0, 14. Let's see. x equals 0 and y equals 14. So 14 equals 0 plus 14. And then therefore 14 is equal to 14. So that is the line. We have found one of the lines, which is y equals x plus 14. Now we need to find the other one, which is x plus 2y equals 36. Let's look at one of the downward sloping lines now. And let's see this line. Let's take a sample point from that graph. Let's take this point up here. That is 0, 18. So x equals 0 and y equals 18. 0 plus 2 into 18 equals 36. 2 into 18 equals 36. Yeah, 36 equals 36. Obviously it does. And therefore, that line is actually the line we are looking for. So the line x plus 2y equals 36 is that one. Now let's use the graph to find an approximate solution. The solution is actually the intersection point between the two lines. The intersection point is right here. We can find an approximate solution to be the point right here and to draw a line from it to show the x and y. x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 17. So this is an approximate solution, obviously not the exact solution, but for now, let's take this approximate solution of x equals three and y equals 17 as the answer, because we need an approximation. Let's move to the 25th question. William plays a game. He throws two fair dice. His score is the higher of the two numbers shown on the dice. The sample space diagram shows some of his possible scores. A. 
complete the sample space diagram. According to what I found here, this will be 4 because 4 is greater than 1. Then this will also be 4, 4, same reasons. And then 5, 5, 5, 5. These will also be 5. And then the rest of the boxes will be 6s. So we have filled in the sample space diagram. Let's move on to the B part. Work out the probability that a score is greater than 4. So let's start with how many values are there in this sample space diagram. There are 36 because 6 rows and 6 columns. So the denominator, I'll write as D, is equal to 36. The numerator, N, is equal to the numbers which are greater than 4, which are in this sample space diagram. So they are the 5s and 6s. Let's see. Let's count the number of 5s and the number of 6s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 5s. And then all the way up to 11, 6s. So the numerator is 9 plus 11, which is equal to 20. Therefore, probability P is 20 by 36, which is when you simplify it, divide by 4, 5 by 9. That's the answer. And that's it for this video. Hope you liked this video, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned something new from it. I will see you in my next videos. Take care. Bye.